you know, we've had, uh, I think, six really good practices um, leading into this game. Um, spent some time last week, obviously, looking at last year's game. Um, you know, getting, you know, um, I guess upset looking at it. Uh, didn't think we played a very good game uh, at Yankee Stadium a year ago. Whether it was the turnovers, um, whether it was not being able to stop the run that day with what they did. I uh, spent a day on it last week just, you know, just making sure, you know, we're good on all ends that way. Just, you know, um, as coaches, you over-prepare. So, you know, having the extra days, you know, we just kind of said, let's go back to it and pretend like we're seeing the same thing again, which, you know, we're not going to, but, you know, just, you know, they can always go wildcat, but um, <laughs> I don't think they do it with Kyle McCord. Um, that'd kind of be a waste, not having him back behind the center. But um, so we've had we've had a good week. I think our guys are excited about a Thursday night game, first night game of the year. Um, in Acrisure Stadium, our kids are excited. So, questions? Well, we talked to Gavin this week, and he said Coach Bro uh, gave him crowbars and said they got to pry the DNs open this week. What are you guys trying to do in the run game to pry the DNs? I think you know Coach Bro. He likes uh, what do you call that when your speech class in eighth grade? Uh, props. Yeah, you know, props or whatever. Just something for him to think about. You know, he's used sledgehammers in the past, or whatever it may be. Um, um, so, you know, he's just, you know, a young guy that uh, comes up with diff different gimmicks just to get the guys thinking about being more physical in the run game because uh, it's going to be a physical football game. They're physical, we're physical. Um, so, not much to say. But, but, but does, does that go to the fact that, you know, you guys are looking to be more physical maybe on the edges to help set up better runs for guys like Devin? Not, not really. You're talking like an edge run. No, I don't think that gives you any indication of <laughs> what kind of runs or anything else. I think it's just an attitude. It's, it's just a, you know, we talk about attitude, it's just a, you know, sledgehammer, whatever you want to call it, crowbar, whatever. It's just an attitude that uh, all the coaches always have some type of little gimmick that they like to talk about. From a defensive perspective, what concerns you most about McCord? Hmm. Jeez, everything. Um, you know, I mean, he's, he's, he's just a really good football player that, uh, can make plays with his feet when he needs to. He's, he's had some nice scrambles and spiked the ball and all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, it's just, you know, just, you know, we got we got to play good coverage. I mean, that, that's what scares you because he can make every throw. He's very accurate. It, probably the scariest part, I guess, is third down. I mean, money down will be critical. I mean, third and medium, the guy doesn't miss. Uh, he's about 75% completion on third down long. But I think either number two or number three in the country in third down conversions. I mean, they are top third down conversion uh, football team. And, and uh, so we got to get off the field on third down. Uh, they're really good. And, uh, you know, it's, and again, it's the whole offense. It's what they do. It's how they do it. Uh, they get guys open. They do a good job game plan. we got NFL coaches there, you know. So, um, you know, it's just what they do. And Kyle McCord can execute what they're doing. He fits their offense and what they're doing. Pat, is his ability to spread it around as a college quarterback unique? Not really. I mean, you look at kind of how Eli does it. I mean, you know, I think he's throwing it where he knows. I mean, he's smart enough to know pre-snap, okay, this is what I got. I'm going here. You know, oh, pre-snap, I got that. You know, he's going to see blitz coming. He's smart. I mean, he's been, you know, well coached, you know, from you know, all of his years, you know, probably from eighth grade up through high school, through Ryan Day at Ohio State to, uh, to you know, their offense there at Syracuse. So I think it's just, you know, he's, he's intelligent. I mean, we talk about his athletic ability, talk about how, you know, what kind of arm he's got, how accurate he is. But all that's great, but if you don't know where to go with the ball, you know, it's a problem. But pre-snap, I mean, he kind of will have a feel of where he likes to go. And, and uh, you know, and that, that's, that's the key is he knows where he wants to go with the ball and he gets it out quick. How do you see him grow his understanding of the different ways to get the ball out quick and where to go? Because you know, every play, there's multiple options and you guys are countering for what you're expecting. Have you seen him grow in, in his ability to decipher the different ways to do that with all of the guys as a playbook. You know, you're talking about, you know, um, Kyle McCord. I'm sorry, I, I was talking about Eli. Eli, as far as what okay, you guys okay. are doing. Okay. I apologize. Um, Eli, um, just, you know, I think he learns every week. I think, you know, again, he's still a young guy. I think we all forget he's a redshirt freshman and McCord's a senior. He should play a mm -hmm. lot more football. Um, but, you know, Eli learns every week. I mean, when you look at it as a quarterback, every week you're seeing something different. You're seeing a different front. You're seeing different coverage. You've got different pass concepts that you're going into the game with. Uh, you know, he's a student of the game, watches a lot of t uh, tape. And, um, you know, you see him grow weekly. But you might not necessarily see an improvement weekly based on what you're seeing defensively. Matt, how have you seen him respond to having a game against Cal? You know, he's, he's, he's slick, man. It just washes right off of him. I mean, he's, he's, he's confident. 
he's uh, you know he's resilient when you watch him practice every day. He, he doesn't. He's got a short memory. Okay, and that's what you want a corner to have. That's what you want a quarterback to have. And you get beat deep on a you know on a go ball as a corner, or you you, you throw a pick six. I mean, he just kind of lets it go. So. Uh, we'll find out how he responds Saturday or Thursday. Did you run across McCord at all in the recruiting process? He's from New Jersey. Um, yeah, he's, he lives in Jersey. He's a Philly kid, I believe. Um, but, uh, you know, I think he was one of those four- and five-star quarterbacks that you know, had his pick. You know, I think we had some communication with him early, but nothing extensive, I don't think. On Friday, on Friday you mentioned um, Tarantino says an unsung hero for you guys against Cal. Uh, what did you like from his game, and how have you seen him work throughout these last couple practices? Well, he's worked. I mean, you know, he, he works at you know every week. I mean, he, he's a, he's you know he's been a backup tackle for us, and uh, Terrence has done a nice job throughout the year. He just keeps he keeps getting better. When you see progress, when you know quarterbacks are harder because of the, the coverage you're seeing. But for Terrence, you know, again, he's the unsung hero because he had to come in and, and, and replace Branson uh, in that game, and, and um, so you know we got a lot of faith in what Branson can do, or what Terrence can do when he's in the, in the game. What do you want to see from Eli in the second half of the season? Is there some area that you would like to see him improve on? I want to play like he did in game one, two, three, four, and five. You know, um, this, yeah. We just want. To, I don't. I'm not looking for this major improvement. Just his job is to distribute the ball to, to guys that need to get the ball and are supposed to get the ball. Just you know, take what they're giving you. You know, if they're going to play deep coverage. You know, you got to you hit them underneath. They, they start coming up and creeping and covering all your checkdowns, and then you got to go behind. He's got to take what they give. And that's every week. So I'm not looking for anything special. He does not need to be Superman. He needs to be Eli Holstein and just do what Eli needs to do. Is that the danger of sometimes hitting some of the, you know, he has the Dejon pass in the uh, West Virginia game, the early in the Carolina mm -hmm. game. He threw to Kanate, like, you know. Hey, quarterbacks are competitors, Chris. I mean, they're competitors. They want to go make plays. And, and, and the same thing on defense, you know, when you go try to, you know, sack a quarterback and you, and you don't get him down. You know, you got you know, you to be patient in what you're doing. And, and uh, again, you, you just got to be patient in what you're doing. So that's it's a learning process. And but you know he's going to be you know he's going to take his shots. That's for sure. Um, just like every quarterback's going to. Just got to be smart. I've seen him be receptive to coaching on, on like those points. Like he's talking about, hey, I have to take what's there, not look as deep. He knows. He knows right away. I mean, he's he's been very, really really receptive. He's coachable. He's a coachable young man. Now, what makes Des Reed such a good receiving option? He's got great hands and he runs good routes. He's twitchy, you know. Um, you know, I think any you know good receiver is twitchy and he can he he, he can find the, the grass. He's finding an open space, uh, so he knows you know when he comes out and he knows what the leverage of that back is. And I mean, he's converting all his routes into different stuff based on you know how they're playing them. The inside out, they are they playing deep on them? Are they you know are they playing um, different leverages? So he's just got a great knack uh, for getting open, and that's what you want guys is to you know. Supposed to run an out route, but the guy's playing outside leverage. Well, don't run out. Go in. You know, find a different uh, space. So he, he's got that experience of doing it, and uh, he knows how to get open. Is he studied? I mean, is that is that a product of him doing extra studying as well? Yeah, I mean, you know, like all our guys, I mean, they, they are deep in the film review all the time. I mean, they, they do a great job. I mean, you know, we got smart kids number one at Pitt, so it's nice when you have intelligence. Uh, Desmond is a is a really smart kid that understands football. He's a football guy. He's a football junkie. So all great players are like that. Do you feel like you guys have a unique threat on your roster with him, Kanate, Poppy, the, the amount of guys you have that are smart route runners that can not only get open by understanding what the defense is doing, but also just naturally because they've gotten really strong in their ability to create separation? No doubt about it. I mean, you know, it comes down to route running, and it comes down to understanding your leverage and what coverage you're getting. You're converting a lot of routes. So, yeah, you've got to know what you're doing. You can't just go out there. You know, We're not just running post routes and go routes. We're running a lot of sophisticated routes and concepts based on coverages, so we're converting routes. Pat, I uh, asked around some of my other AP guys that cover the ACC about do they have FCS guys on their roster, and said the answer I got back was not really nice, certainly not anybody as impactful as Desmond. Has the portal like maybe diminished opportunities for those guys like Des, like Poppy, sincerely to kind of make that leap? I don't think so. I mean, you know, you know, the other AP guys that you've talked to, I don't know. I mean, if they look. They cover the other school. Yeah, but um, you know they're they're out there. I mean, you got to go find them, and you got to dig. And, and obviously, we had inside info on that one. Um, but I'll go back to you know probably five or six years ago. My alma mater wrote out and had a tackle went to Georgia. You know, Cheney recruited him down there. I'm like maybe it's more than five years ago, six years ago. So transfers from one AA are happening all the time. Um, and you know whether St. Francis had a bunch of guys go you know move up. I mean, so they they're moving on to Power Five teams a lot.
Well, we're more about this program's personal philosophy on it, or your philosophy on it, because it has most of the transfers you guys got coming in now are coming from other you know, power five schools. Yeah, I mean, look at look at uh, Tyler Wiltz a couple years ago came from Missouri State. Missouri State, you know, with, uh, thanks, EJ. I mean, he, that guy was a phenomenal football player, you know. Um, I mean, that guy was a, you know, he, he made an impact in our, our defensive linebacker. He's tough, and can, what you saw on tape, you saw it, doesn't matter. I mean, I think there's a fine line between FBS and FCS, and uh, it's about good players that love football. And I think some of those younger guys, you know, those 1AA guys are hungry guys that want to prove that they can play at the next level. And, and that's what we found with some of those guys. Do you find your job to be more interesting and maybe more challenging because of the portal? And you, you have to think out of the, outside the box more than you did maybe 10 years ago? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you're, you're taking more of those guys out of the portal. Like every year we've increased the amount of guys we're taking, but we're not taking guys to take guys. But, you know, it's always interesting. You know, there's never, you know, never a dull day, you know, sitting in that seat. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, it's part of the, part of the process. You've got to evolve and change. And, and um, you know, again, I think, you know, we had a stat, I think I maybe mentioned it to you earlier in the week or radio show or something. You know, we're 72% win on transfers. That's pretty good. I mean, 72% is a good number of guys you've hit on it. We've made some mistakes on guys as well, um, but some of those were calculated mistakes that we kind of go, that was a mistake and we knew it, we had questions. But sometimes you have a need and, you, and there's not much left. And you have a need, you know, and you, pr you push and press to, to take a guy um, and maybe make mistakes that way. But, you know, just being patient, we don't need them. You know, we want them if they're good, we don't want them if they're not. What, 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 I'm just, Jerry, what, quali what quantifies as a win? My question. Sorry. Okay. Uh, sorry, Jerry. If you want to ask that, no, well, go right ahead. <laughs> well, a guy, you know, like when you're bringing starters in, they're playing for you. I mean, you know, you know, we, we, you know, if they're coming in as starters, you know, they're, they're you know, they're, they're good players. We took a kid from Kent State, you know, the Milano, uh, Milano kid, uh, Stefano, Stefano, Paisan, um, and uh, and he did a great job for. Him. I mean, there's guys you just, you know, but you like them, you know, you, know, you just a win is a guy that's coming in and playing for you. Whether it's Nathan Peterman, go back. I mean, you go back. And we got all the records. I'll share it with you maybe after the season one day. Has the transfer portal contributed to maybe some of the parity that you see around uh, the entire college football this year? I think so, but I think the parity's been there for years, even prior to you know, it's given someone an opportunity. And um, but you know, I think college football, anybody can win on any given. Forget your record. If you don't show up, you're going to get beat. Um, and you see that week in, week out. And I'm not sure the transfer portal has a lot to do with it, but. Um, you know, I, I think it certainly helps a little bit depending on, you know, what you get and where you get them. Pat, was there any unique message you gave your team that during the bye week to kind of, you know, stay about staying focused, you know, after a 6-0 and historic start for Pitt? Not really. I mean, you know, hopefully they forget about 6-0. and I mean, it's a constant preach. After you're 1-0, you have to, you know, Kent State game, it's the same same message. There's no different over this. You know, we're just trying to be 1-0. and The focus is 1-0. and What are we doing this week? It's not about Syracuse. It's about what Pitt does. It comes down to our execution on, on game day. Do you feel like you guys? I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Um, do you feel like you got you guys benefit from a unique standpoint of leadership where you have a guy like Gavin Bartholomew, you guys like Brandon George, who've been part of an ACC championship team, but just also were part of a three and nine team that who can effectively talk to the, the younger teammates and be like, hey, this can be the difference between winning and losing. No doubt, we're always going to you know feed off of our senior leadership um, that we have, especially those guys that you know. Um, I've been there before, so there's no doubt. There's lessons learned, right? I mean, you learn from a, a three and nine season, just like you learn from a, an eleven and two season. Among your top five wideouts, and Desmond, I think between the six of them, they had three drops all year. Um, <laughs> um, uh, the, like five years ago, I think that was among the top in the country in drops. Is it just a difference in talent? Is it a difference in coaching or quarterback? I think it's, I think it's talent. I think it's. Um, you know, I think it's certainly talent. I think it's coaching too. I think you coach that, and you know, whether it's doing different type of ball drills, and you know, and again, it comes down to you know being positive as a coach. I think, you know, you don't dwell on a drop in practice. I mean, what are you doing? You know, I mean, it's like you know, they don't need to hear about it. They dropped it, but you know, you just move on and keep going. But I think you know, coaching is, is a big part of it. You know, JJ's done a great job. Pat, um, we were just talking. Some of us were earlier talking to Coach Tomlin, and he said that he talked to the league yesterday about that there was a Mika Fitzpatrick had blocked an extra point got flagged for leverage. He said it looked like the official said he touched uh, TJ, but his fingers sort of glanced his helmet. He talked to New York, said New York said, hey, it's not a penalty. It shouldn't have been a penalty in the game. It was what was the call? It was a penalty? It was, they, called leverage the on, they called leverage on. He kind of left over the line and he, he blocked it sort of point. like, okay. it sort of looked like he grazed TJ's helmet as, 
as he did it. When you guys go to the VACC with the calls you don't like, they don't. Do they say, "Hey, that was our bad"? And what did what does your staff get out of the process? Does it become a teaching point, or you just feel better about venting to the league? It's a coaching point. I mean, Al Riveron's done a great job of, of you know communicating with us, and you know we send in calls, you know, and they do a great job of letting us know. Like last week, we had a you know crazy call. Um, I'm a shot battle for you know taking someone. You know, you can't take someone's knees out. You know, just to knock stuff out, and you know, I don't think he even touched the guy, but it looked like the guy fell down, and we got called for it. So you bring, you send calls in. You know, they got a hard job. I mean, officials do not have an easy job. Things are happening fast out there, um, and uh, you got to have your eyes. But they do a good job with operation, and and uh, we expect them to be perfect. They're not going to be perfect. Our players are not going to be perfect, and our coaches are not going to be perfect. Well, what do you get out of the feedback? Do you take that feedback to, that I'm like tell our kids to the coaches in the set? No teams? doubt, no doubt. We'll watch you know officials tapes, you know, and staff meetings in here, and go through what was called, what was not called, and and you know try to educate our kids. That's all. The best we can do is try to educate our kids on what's being called and what's not going to be called. Um, so we can, you know, I don't know what play that is. If you guys want to send it to me, that'd be great. Send DJ. Forgive me, what was, what was the call against Rashad that play? It was the, it was uh, like, they ran a screen out there and he right. broke up and, and actually made the tackle. Yeah. Got, the, you know, got the guy, but the, the lineman was coming and he beat the lineman there. And the lineman fell down. It looked like it was a, you know, it, I guess they called a block below the waist on defense. Yeah, you know, used to be able to did, deal. So, did, did the ACC say that was an incorrect call? Or it was an incorrect call. They made you know, but you know, it's a, it's a bang bang, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they, you know, I'm not criticizing them at all. It's, uh, I think they do a great job, and uh, and they, they'll use that to coach up their officials. And you know, one of the first plays was uh, this week was one that was a real good call, okay, in a game in an ACC game, and that's what they want called. And then you know, but they're going to make mistakes. We're all going to make them. I got one more. Coach, do you see this uh, matchup with Syracuse as a rivalry? I know they, they put up rivalry week for this matchup. Do you see Syracuse and Pitt as true football? Certainly is. I mean, we've played them, you know, nine times so far. It's just 10th year. It's someone that's in a conference. It's a, it's a rivalry game. Uh, is it like West Virginia? I mean, you can, you know, you rate your, you know, your rivalry games on a scale of one to 10. Um, but, you know, I, I certainly think it's a rivalry because we play them all. It's a, it's a, it's a game we're going to play every year at Pitt. So um, it certainly is a rivalry game for us. Okay.